okay right good morning to all and uh, those who are in online can you hear yes can you see nobody is in online only one only one is in online two is myself yes anyway right those who, you you can can you hear can you hear right you can see right okay fine thanks right uh, good morning to you all and uh, right okay fine right uh, so far we have discussed basically two aspects right so in uh, last two sessions one is that you know the basic introduction to the auditing and the sums of the concepts right so that should be addressed in auditing so i am not going to you know that uh, recall those things again then uh, we come to the discussion on plan uh, what do you call that uh, engagement right letter of engagement acceptance so we will do the engagement through what we get the engagement in written form in written form through engagement letter right through engagement letter right so now we you know that uh, accept the engagement right now we supposed to you know that start of our work for that particular client now we accept the engagement now we are planning to or we are in the process of uh, you know the starting our you know the audit or whatever the review engagement or whatever the assurance engagement so basically we, we are considering on audits right now we start of doing the audit now what's your idea so how do we suppose to start a particular engagement right we st we should start from where that is the point audit planning so you should plan your work why why do you want to plan your work yes those who are in online why do you want to plan your work not for an audit so any other work even right any comments yes sorry sorry risk reduce the risk to reduce the risk is one answer yes what else what else ensure all areas are covered okay fine yes 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 complete that uh, you know the work or the engagement on time within the time frame okay right anything else right so basically as you pointed out you know that uh, we are doing a risk based audit risk based audit what do you mean by risk based audit what do you mean by a risk based audit right so as we discussed at the beginning 
so we are we, we form or we do a test on our sample so by having the sample do, you, do we have any risk or not yes or no yes definitely we have a risk why whether our sample is represented in the whole population right still there may be some you know that uh, misstatements in the population that have not been detected through the sample yes or no can happen or not can so there are no way i mean we are not going for us check in on the whole population therefore we have a risk we have a risk definitely we have a risk we have the audit methodology we have that you know the risk assessment and everything but still there are vacuum to have the misstatements that have not been undetected right so therefore we do for the risk or we perform the risk based audit so we should accept that in that sense our focus is to reduce the risk to an acceptably low we cannot eliminate the risk to the 100% we have to accept the risk but then what we have to do we have to reduce the risk to an acceptably low to the level we so it is it is you know general like it, it's normal like this no if you are doing a business there, is there any risk or not definitely there are risk there is a risk of doing the business that's why you should have risk management strategies risk mitigation strategies for a business that's why management yes or no right that's why you should have risk management as like in a audit also you have a risk as we discuss but again we should be able to reduce the risk to an acceptably low level through what through the proper audit plan through the proper audit plan right if you have a plan now your points are valid if you have a proper plan we can ensure yes all important areas in simple terms we can cover up all the areas if you have a proper plan at the beginning right so especially we can have more on more risk areas right we can have more focus on more risk areas so there are some you know the companies they have some more or the inherent risk in some areas let's say simple example i will tell you right uh, so that oh, i mean that uh, company so that they may have 50 locations so 50 outlets other part of the country right so then uh, they may have warehouses to i mean they stock those inventories and everything in different places now the inventory of that particular business is more vulnerable for the misuse yes or no yes you can have the controls but still there is a chance of misusing those resources if you have the outlets outside the colombo outside the head office you know other parts of the country so there, there is a risk of misusing all not all inventory maybe the cash right employees are not working properly they are not coming on in you know, time you can have the controls on that but there is a risk of misusing whatever the resources in the company they with the money on time they will keep the money for a few days probably they will 
you know that uh, put the money the invoice on the sales date because you will get the money, put the money with them they will put the to the system why they want the money with them for a some sort of period can it happen or not can happen everything is all about the fraud right as to discuss you know mistakes can arise from where frauds and errors therefore we should be alert on that we should be alert on that right therefore at the initial stage of your engagement we should make sure or we should have the knowledge un understanding on what on the whole business nature industry where the company operates right you have the overall understanding what are the legal implications that are applicable to that particular company right now at the moment so i have completed the audit for a hotel so what happened over there you have some legal implications you want to pay the tourist board levy right so you want to make sure those things have been happened so they have the liquor license they want to comply with those with those requirements so th then if it is a liquor license then you should have the pradeshi sabha levy and all that lot of things are there right so a lot of involvements are there then again you know for a normal business epf etf tax requirements everything is there you should have general understanding on what are those you know the legal requirements right so that's one side the other side so you know that whole nature of the business i mean uh, so what are the industry practices what are the industry benchmarks what are the industry norms you should have some sort of understanding before starting your audit so that's a part of planning if you don't have that knowledge you can be cheated by the manager telling you know whatever the stories so that what that's what happened in some of the cases therefore you should be smart of getting those knowledge so before your audit right it's it's a part of the planning work <coughs> so then another important point is you should make sure that you are with the fundamental principles or the ethical requirements of doing the audit for that particular client right so you start the engagement by considering the independence professional behavior competence and everything but again in the planning stage make sure that you are with those requirements it's a part of that right and again there are some requirements for a firm i mean audit firm so they want to make sure the quality control requirements they right they want to put the good i mean that uh, senior people those who are having the knowledge and the technical competencies to do the otherwise what will happen you know just put the trainees what will happen i mean trainees in the sense very new trainees the quality of the work will be getting lower right so therefore it's a one example only so therefore lot of you know the quality control requirements are within the audit firm it's a part of you know the firm requirements there is a separate standard on that as well but basically you understand that there is the quality quality requirements or the quality control requirements they are where the audit firm should maintain why why to form the correct opinion to form the correct opinion right if they are not i mean the the auditors are not working properly then what can happen at the end most probably your opinion may be wrong maybe right so therefore you should do the quality work and again make sure in the planning stage yes we are complying with the quality requirements for that particular audit client to that particular audit client 
okay so then again as to discuss now you should have a basic understanding about the business and the industry right so and make sure that you know we are compliant with the quality control requirements as well as ethical principles right now you can look into the you know the business specific points you can get the basic trial uh, trial balance and the income statement and the you know whatever the financial statements of the company and you can do i am giving some examples for the risk assessment and the planning stage right so you can do the financial statement analysis that is what is called in audit terms analytical procedures now you are doing that subject financial statement analysis yes or no now you have calculated the ratios and everything you are smart on that so then nothing to worry i mean in my case so that knowledge is very much important for the auditor as well why so what are the you know the tools you have used i mean for the financial statement analysis what are the methods you have used ratio analysis horizontal analysis vertical analysis what else sorry index index yes index is uh, going with the trend analysis trend analysis those are the areas yes okay fine so then you have that knowledge you have to apply that knowledge into the audit why why by doing so you will be able to understand and identify what are the risk areas at the initial stage simple example you know gross profit has increased from last year to this year by 30% can it happen can it happen huh gross profit has increased by 30% from last year to this year can it happen hmm for the auditor point of view yes that can happen but still you want to look into that is it really happened or not you want to collect the more evidence on that there is a probable risk for the auditor in that case if it is 5% increase yes it is acceptable right not that much of you know the deviation but 30% increase what can happen is there any manipulation here is it probable to have that manipulation there is a probability there is a probability therefore it doesn't mean that there is a, something wrong with that that is something you know there is a fraud with that no it doesn't mean like that but it's a it's a area where you want to focus more and make comfort by collecting the relevant audit evidences you should give it means you should give the justification for that you know that uh, significant increase in the gross profit margin right so that's how we reduce our risk at the initial we have areas right it means where these are the risk areas yes you look into that right so then while you are you have to more focus and you have to collect more evidences on those areas okay right any comments right that's why now you under so you want to focus more on some area so i mean some areas in the sense risk and make more attention on that 
right make more attention on that so you should be able to know if you do the analytical procedures in the planning stage right by you know that considered in the financial informations given by the management clear right it's a, it's a you know the ratio analysis and that you know the analytical procedures are a very good tool to assess the risk of the client right in the planning stage so the other aspect is i give the simple example for that you know the importance of analytical procedures we will discuss later on in detail so how do we perform the analytical procedures and what are the areas we want to focus for a particular client so that will be discussed later i just give the simple example to tell you the application and the importance of analytical procedures in the planning stage to identify the more risk areas and you know you know that make your focus on those areas so in the your you know that performing stage right right then next uh, important point is you know that uh, from the auditor's point of view planning is very much important right why again so you know that uh, audit is a business right so therefore you should have the correct people in hr concept is valid at that point as well you should have the correct people at the correct time right and we want to give the guidance for them so therefore it's a very important point is that we should have proper guidance proper people at the proper at the correct time right everything can be done if you have a proper plan if you don't have that such a proper plan you are not in a position to you know that uh, fulfill those requirements why so you want to put the correct people so then you should have a plan how many people or how many uh, i mean the auditors are required for that particular engagement so then how many seniors how many juniors you should have the plan right so then again you should give the guidance how do you perform the audit work you should give the reference last year how do they perform then it is very easy to very easily that they will be able to work by themselves right so all these things can be done if you have a proper plan right so all the points are given here i just recall or i just uh, you know discuss those points right i just discuss those points so we'll see so this is related to the uh, planning of audit and audit of planning and audit of financial statements that is sls 300 300 so then we'll discuss audit material that is 320 that is something else from this right so basically plan and overall audit involves establishing the overall audit strategy for the engagement developing an audit plan in order to reduce the audit audit risk to an acceptably low level this is what we discussed very important adequate adequate planning helps to ensure that appropriate attention is devoted to important areas of the audit as you discuss right potential problems are identified and resolved on a timely basis it's a part of that again then the audit engagement is properly organized and managed in order to be performed in an effective and efficient manner that's why i tell you you should have how many people how many auditors you know what are the resources required and what's the time frame everything in advance you know you have to plan so then actually those things are happening so all the audit managers are having how many trainees i have right so they are, they have the chart and table everything 
So then uh, how many audits I have? So when and where are that those audits are started? So by you know this date this will be completed. Then these you know the people can be transferred to that that client base. Everything is covered by November 30th. You know all the audits should be completed in in local context. So that you know the company should uh, file the annual returns and tax returns and everything by 30th of November, right? So if you do, don't do so, then that should be a problem. I mean, the, so sometimes you know that that uh, seal will be there that delay delay submission, right? So there is a, you know that's a legal requirement is to submit all that you know the audited uh, reports uh, along with the audited reports, tax returns and everything by 30th November. Right, so all tax return should be filed by 30th November. So then this is the peak time, you know, that closing period. So then 31st March is the end of the financial period. By November 30th, they want to file the returns and you know everything. Right. So therefore, this time everything should be done. Right, for all 31st March year-end financial statements for the companies. In local context, we will find almost all the companies with 31st March. 31st December you have the UK based and you know other <coughs> uh, other financial I mean the other I mean companies outside the Sri Lanka that are operating in Sri Lanka right so it's all right but most of the cases we have 31st March year end therefore you should properly plan that work it's a very important point So again, it will ensure the proper assignment of work, right? So who is going to do this part? Who is going to do this part, right? So PPE, property plant and equipment, one. Prepayments, one, right? Assets, uh, the, I mean the current assets. So one training, one auditor. Likewise, we should have the proper assignment of work. Then. Facilitate the direction and supervision of engagement team. Yes, what I discussed. Assist where applicable in you know, coordination of work done by auditors of components and experts. So everything should be planned. Quality control requirements. Perform procedures regarding the continuance and of the client relationship and the specific audit engagement. Quality, quality control. Then evaluate compliance with ethical requirements including independence so that's what we discuss again establish an understanding of the terms of audit engagement so all these what we discuss right this is very important point we have two concepts here overall audit strategy and the audit plan right so we will move on to this. This is very important. I will come back to the previous slides again. You see this? What is more broader? Audit? Audit strategy. Audit strategy.
right it tells basically scope direction and timing we'll discuss later on what are those you know the scope direction and timing so the so audit strategy will be narrow to the audit plan audit plan can include nature timing and extent of plan risk assessment procedure so so it covers the nature timing and extent of audit procedures we'll discuss one by one understand this overall stru structure first we will have the audit strategy it talks about the scope and time right so then you have the audit plan it, it narrow that will be you know that execute through the audit plan scope direction and timing so then we will have the audit plan that talks about what nature time and extent of audit procedures nature timing and extent of audit procedures right right that's why it talks about the function of the audit and guides the development of the more detailed audit plan right it talks about scope timing and direction what is scope determine the character of the define its scope right so what what, what does it tell what do, what do you mean by scope is the boundary nothing else it's a boundary for a, what's the what's the scope for the auditor the scope is the auditing standards right whatever the relevant auditing standards so i mean for audit so all auditing standards are relevant so you have the compliance you have so for those requirements there are some other relevant right so for review engagement there is a separate standard related standard so you, you have to comply with that as well for uh, agreed upon procedures again you have a separate standard so we'll discuss at the at later so what are those you know the standards and what are those requirements right so final stage we'll discuss in your you know the course at the moment you identify so what's the scope means so that's what determine the characteristics of the engagement that define that define its scope right based on the engagement its scope is getting change that's what it talks right based on your engagement its scope is getting change what is timing again very important it's it's assertion of the engagement and the timing of the audit and the nature of the communication required right it's not reporting objective to plan the timing of the audit and the nature of the communication required so i can remember i mean uh, we will have reporting requirements as the auditors right so as the auditors we should report to the management as well as our main auditors sometimes 
or the principal auditors right so there are our reporting requirements and reporting deadlines again right so reporting one of the reporting requirement is you know that analytical procedures and report to the principal auditor or the management that type of reporting requirements are there right so in that sense they will structure the reporting requirements or the you know their questionnaires and everything we should answer for those that's what that's how it goes so then based on that reporting requirements they may have the deadlines they may have the structure based on that we have to plan our work that's the idea the what is direction consider the important factor that will determine the focus of the engagement right so in this particular company what is the most important or the what is the key driven factors for a buying and selling company what is more important basically what is more important for a buying and selling company what is the key factor for a buying and selling company is the sales or the revenue why that business is driven through what the revenue sales or the turnover right for a bank what is the most important factor one of the most important factor for a bank sorry sorry deposits no why your credit exposure and everything will depends on what total asset base now when it comes to that you know the scale of the bank so what what they are talking total asset base right so likewise you may have some important factors you should make more focus on those areas that is what talks in the direction consider the important factors that will determine the focus of effort right as we discuss at the planning stage you are, what is the most important aspect of a particular company or the business then you should have more focus on that it doesn't mean that others you don't want to do you want but still you should have the more focus on that important right that important area what because the area properly you will be able to reduce the risk to an acceptably low level because we are addressing to the core area of that particular business if you have this particular area proper it does it means that what we have an address to the core area of the business then our risk is getting higher right so basically overall audit strategy talks as we discuss the resources to deploy for a specific audit areas the amount of resources to allocate to specific audit areas when these resources are deployed how resources are managed directed and supervised right so as we discuss a structured approach to planning will include you see please go through with this first we should make sure that ensure that ethical requirements are met including the independence requirements and other requirements so then ensure engagements are understood 
and establishing the order of this audit strategy that sets the scope, timing and direction of the audit and guides the development of the audit plan. And the characteristics of the engagement that define, that define its scope, right? And then assess the reporting objectives to plan the timing of the audit and nature of communications required. Then consider significant factors in directing the team's effort. Consider result preliminary engagement activities. Assess nature, time and extent of resources necessary to perform the engagement. Then develop an audit plan that includes nature, time and extent of plan risk assessment procedures and further procedures. Right? So you understand now, so how do we perform our work in the planning stage? So these are the areas basically we cover in case of you know the overall audit strategy. Please just go through with this. So everything what we have discussed. So first, characteristics of the engagement that talks about what? Scope. Then reporting objectives, timing of audit, nature of communication that talks about what? Timing. Significant factors, preliminary engagement activities, knowledge gain on other engagements that talks about what? Direction. Direction. So these are the things what we are supposed to do in the practically, practically when we are planning our audit work that is our overall audit strategy, overall audit strategy. Then overall audit strategy should be implemented through what? Through the audit plan, right? Through the audit plan. So then go through with this question and come back to your answer.
What's the answer? Right? So what's the answer? Yes? Those who are in online? What's the answer for the question? Yes? Which of the following procedures would an auditor most likely to perform in planning a financial statement audit? That's the answer. B. Perform an analytical procedure. It's a must. It's a must. It's a very fundamental requirement where the auditor should perform in the planning stage. Yes, any answer? From the online, right. Then again, as we discuss, the auditor should develop the audit plan for the auditor in order to reduce the audit risk to an acceptably low level. The audit plan converts the audit strategy into a more detailed plan and includes the nature, timing and extent of audit procedures to be performed by engagement team members in order to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to reduce audit risk to an acceptably low level. This is again what we have discussed, right? So how do you do this? Uh, I mean, uh, so that audit plan will discuss so how do we reduce our risk to an acceptably low level? You see, audit plan includes description of the nature, 
time in and extent of plan risk assessment procedures, a description of the nature time and extent of plan future audit procedures, such other audit procedures required to be carried out by the audit carried out for the engagement in order to comply with Sri Lanka auditing standards. So this is what we discuss, right? Right, as we discussed, so audit strategy talks about scope, direction and timing. Audit plan talks about nature, timing and extent of plan risk assessment procedures. So then again, so fill the blanks and come up with the answer for this. What's the answer those who are in online? Please come up with the answer. Are you really in online? Yes. So then what's the answer? What's the answer for those two questions? Body, but uh, video is not appearing. Okay. Now is it okay? Now video you can see. Right, okay. Okay. So then uh, come up with the answer.
right what's the answer sorry scope timing and direction is the formulation of general strategy for the audit is it the answer no and overall the strategy overall audit strategy is the formulation of general strategy for the audit and what's the answer audit plan is the uh, is a set of instructions to the audit team that sets that sets out the further audit procedures to be carried out changes to the overall audit strategy or audit plan do not need to be documented it's false definitely you should be you should documented everything not only the change in the overall audit strategy everything should be documented in a proper way in your audit work in papers right it's a must okay those who are in online right any any clarifications so far these are some of the examples that can be covered in the audit plan time table allocation of work audit procedures for each major accounts areas materiality now we supposed to discuss so these are some areas that should be included in the audit plan there are a lot right right now we come to the very important point so far important but again this is also very important now we have we are knowing that all businesses are having internal controls do you have yes do you have controls internal controls yes or no yes what are the controls can you give some examples for the internal controls where the businesses are having what are the internal controls where the businesses should have yes those are online please tell me what are the controls you have in your business this should be you know that our discussion should be in two way otherwise i am talking you are listening but uh, should be in two ways yes 
what are the controls you have in your business do you have any controls no simple control is you have the office hours let's say 8:30 4:30 what is that just simple administrative control when it comes to the financial controls there are there are a lot there are a lot of financial controls what are those sorry over time what what's the, what's the control over there if you want to do the overtime you should get the approval from the respective authorities otherwise just come in without having any work to get the overtime so that is again most probably happening yes what else for a check signing authority if it is more than 100000 you know the accountant finance manager director finance should be signed if it is less than 100000 finance manager and accountant can sign what is this segregation of duties these are the controls why do we have this then one person can not do the pro otherwise what can happen is you know if, if the accountant can do this what will what can happen so if, if the accountant can sign for all the checks then what can happen he will sign a check in favor of him or her and just go away he knows when and where the highest money comes to the our account or the company account once you get that money let's say 3 3 million sign a check to him cash check and get the money and disappear can it happen or not can happen if there is no segregation of duties right so then if they get to get to do it is somewhat imp impossible it doesn't mean that it that cannot be done that can be but still you know that comes to the collusion that is you know i mean the probability of having such type of situation is somewhat lesser right so these are some of the controls then again you know when it comes to the purchasers purchasing manager can decide the supplier or purchasing committee what are those those are the part of the controls part of the controls right why do we have such controls why do we have such controls minimize the projects and errors
Generally, mechanism is why? Huh? To reduce the errors and frauds. Yes. Yes, basically the requirement is to safeguard the assets of the business and make sure that there is no misuse of and all employees are working in the with the requirements so with the compliant with the inter controls in order to make sure the objectives so to achieve the objectives and vision and mission of the company right to manage the risk so final inter control is you know addressing to the risk area risk management right therefore it's a i mean the very important area where we want to look into as far as concerns the risk or as far as concerns the controls for a business is who is whose internal controls whose responsibility to have the internal controls to implement the internal controls in the business whose whose uh, responsibility to maintain the proper internal control mechanism in the business keep in mind it's the management responsibility is there any company requirement or legal requirements to have the proper controls in the business huh no there is no such internal uh, legal or the mandate in such controls but again very important to have the proper control mechanisms in the business what the owners and the employees are different so they are get something out of that if there is an opportunity you should eliminate those opportunities of misuse in the company resources by having sound internal control system in the business right it's a very important from the management point of view right that's one area from very important why why what all are in online can you hear can you see you are okay any comments no reply right okay any clarifications you can ask right okay right why that internal control mechanism is important to the auditor as we discuss right if the company is having inter proper internal control system we will be able to or the management will be able to reduce the frauds and errors yes or no yes if the management can reduce the frauds and errors it means that the financial statements are free from frauds and errors it's free from misstatements yes or no if it is the situation the is getting high or low high or low lower it is getting reduced right and again the other the company is not having proper internal control mechanism the mistake the statements are getting higher they getting high or low higher therefore in the planning stage auditor should auditor should perform the test of controls auditor should perform the test of controls what do you mean by test of controls very simply 
what it has to check whether these companies have in proper internal control mechanism or internal control method right and those internal control those controls are open business those internal controls are operating in the business that should be checked through the audit evidences how perform the test of controls let's say one area get the purchases so whether the company is raising a purchase invoice who how how do they select the suppliers right so all the check all these requirements are complying with their internal control mechanism or the manual you understand everything you can look into everything you can look into that's why as we discuss again you want to look into the internal control mechanisms so that is one area purchasing sales everything you have to so when you are purchasing the fixed assets or the non current assets so i mean you can do the controlling or the test of controls in those specified areas and make sure that what's the risk level of this particular client so that's the risk assessment to under is is whether this client is a risky client or not or an average uh, line no average uh, i mean the average result if you get the average on the, as far as the risk assessment so there are maybe three areas basically you know high risk client average client or less risk assess that by doing proper test of or by doing you know assessing the test controls of that client that can be done through the test of controls test of controls that's why this talks about risk assessment procedures the audit procedures performed to any of the entities and its environment including the entity's internal control to include in the entity's internal control very important to and assess the risk of material misstatement whether due to fraud or error at the financial statement and assertion levels therefore it's a very important point right if this now do the assessment we understand that this client is risky client what the company is not maintaining proper controls we do the controls and understand that they don't have such internal controls and they are not complying with those you know the controls as well right so therefore we conclude that this client is risky client then what's our next course of action then what do you supposed to do huh this is the point where i am talking if this is a risky client you assess that you conclude that this is a risky client 
you have to extend your audit procedures you have to do further procedures you have to do further audit procedures yes or no yes what to reduce your if it is a average client so the way that you you have plan you can proceed if it is less risk client it's up to you to decide can you reduce your you know that audit testings and all that it's up to you to decide oh otherwise as you or as you you know that uh, plan you can go there is no harm with that right so by having proper risk assessment you should make sure that you on the required areas in detail or to the required to reduce your risk to an acceptably low level right so the rest is again i mean that uh, this one also audit material is you know the extension of what we are discussing so i will be discussing with uh, that part so within uh, you know the 10 minutes break so that is the audit materiality that is the extension of you know the planning work because that risk assessment result is very much important to the materiality we'll discuss later on the link of that very important area right i will be discussing after the break so before you know that concluding our session so i mean that uh, first uh, part of the session so get the answer for this what's the answer should be answer should be sorry c c is wrong what is the answer <clears throat> those who are in online yes what is the answer those who are in online please come up with the answer no answers sorry answer is b answer is b answer is b evidence to be gathered to provide a sufficient and sufficient basis for the auditor's opinion the answer is b right so with that move into the materiality so after the break so by 10 minutes time we'll again come back to the session okay any any clarifications so those who are online you are you know the response is very much important to proceed right okay so if you have any clarifications you can ask right so your active participation is very much uh, appreciated right okay thanks we'll uh, come back with that uh, you know 10 minutes break right shall we start those who are online can you hear can you see okay are you okay those who are online right okay right thanks okay right uh, 
so far we discussed the importance of plan and, and how do we create how do we develop uh, or develop an audit plan right so with that again we are moving to the another important aspect of planning another important aspect of planning what is this audit materiality what do you mean by audit materiality how this is important for the auditor what is materiality what is materiality sorry whatever the information that is important to change the economic users decision that is materiality so let's say simple example right so the company has paid the dividends this year 1 million total dividend payments is 1 million that has not been disclosed in the financial statement now simple example right that has not been disclosed in the financial statements that dividend distribution right because of because of this reason because of this reason one user is not making the investment decision because he feel that he or she the invest that investor is thinking that the company has not paid any dividends for this particular year therefore i am not going to make a decision on that in that that information or the dividend information is material or not material so i just give the simple example right like any information any amounts any disclosures that may have a impact to change the user decisions that is what is called material information right now you can understand therefore materiality is getting change from one person to the other one user to the other yes or no it depends it depends on uh, you know the education level you know the i mean that uh, uh, whatever the other you know the attitudes right so the i mean the wealth of that uh, in, investors or not only the investors all everybody all stakeholders right it depends it's it's subjective not objective from the users point of view from the stakeholders point of view right then as far as concerned the auditor what is the implication what is the application of audit materiality right so if you can remember even the audit report talks about the financial statements give true and fair and the financial statements free from material due to fraud or error that is how we specified the audit report material the audit report is the financial statements are free from material misstatements what does it mean then there may be immaterial misstatements in the financial statements maybe or not maybe there may be immaterial misstatements yes acceptable but there are material misstatements right there won't be in simple terms the financial statement should not include significant frauds and errors yes or no that is a simple you know the theory what we are talking simple you know that uh, concept we are we are talking there 
auditor should calculate the materiality auditor should identify the material level right why it is very important why hmm right keep that question in your mind why do you want to calculate the material keep that question in your mind then uh, now you know, have the idea what is materiality then we'll see how to calculate the materiality how to calculate the materiality keep that question in your mind i will come back to that Slide number 37, right? How to calculate the materiality? So when the business is profit driven, okay, business decisions are made on the based on the profitability. So basically manufacturing and service entities, right? What is more important is the base is profit before tax. Then your materiality, materiality level should be 5 to 10 percent from the net profit or the profit before tax of that particular company. Let us say 10 million is the profit before tax for that particular company. So then your material should be how much? 10 million into? You have to select 5 to 10 percent. Let us say 6 percent. 10 million into 6 percent means what? 600,000. It is about 600,000. Right? It's your material level. Keep in mind that is your material level. So, what is the application of material level for the auditor? I will discuss. Now, you understand how to calculate the material. If it is a business revenue, revenue driven, basically buying and selling companies, what should be your basis? Revenue. So, then you have to select in between this 0.5 to 1 percent. If it is an asset based business entities where net assets provide basis for the most of the stakeholders decision then so let us say a simple example for the banks financial institutions as I discuss asset base you get the asset base net assets to out of 2 percent to 5 percent from net assets or if it is for the total assets 1 to 2 percent. Right? This is not a rule, but this is the you know the general or the industry practices for the auditors. And again, the guidelines given. Based on that, you can calculate the materiality. Can you do that? Yes or no? Yes, you can calculate this. Very simple. Understand the nature of the business and put into the required. Or understand the required basis and from that you can get the range. Now you know what is materiality. So far I discuss what? What is materiality? and how to calculate the materiality. Are you clear on that? Any comments? Those who are in online? Right? I, I told two aspects on materiality. One is what is materiality and then how to calculate the materiality. Now, I am talking about 
what's the application of materiality for the auditor let's say i will i will discuss this let's say i will type here we are a business buying and selling right nature of the business buying and selling right buying and selling right you can see you in your from your screen can you see not from here from your screen you can see okay right but i am typing not from here from your i mean those who are in online can you see should be right that is shared shared no can can you see the screen okay buying and selling company let's say revenue or the sales is a uh, 10 million right 10 million is the revenue then what's your material level materiality okay let's say 0.7% we'll take 7% percent, 0.7% percent. for the easiness we'll take uh, 1% Okay, point seven. It's all right. right now what's the material level right for the easiness we'll take 1% right now 100000 is the material level we calculate it and get it what's the implication of this how do you apply this material level for our audit why this is important those who are in online you can see my excel work in right any any clarifications please tell me 
you can see my excel work in right right okay thanks right any clarification you can ask right now understand this concept we talk about we do the sampling how do we calculate the sample so let's say sales is a 3 million right sorry it is given revenue 10 million that's a sales 10 million right let's say now we will take a separate one purchases let's say purchases 5 million so if it is 10 million it should be at least 7 million purchases 7 million Seven million, right? Let's say like this. Then, how many samples you want to check? I'm asking the sample size of purchases. How many samples you want to check? How to calculate that? Seven million divided by hundred thousand. Sample size you can calculate population divide by material level. What is this? What, what, what does it mean? You want to check 70 samples or the purchase invoices with the other support and documents to make sure the purchases of shell, uh, 7 million right this is the audit methodology this is the application of materiality for our audit work that is one aspect understand now now you understand basically how to calculate this right then the application of uh, materiality for our audit work now the another scenario now you understand that while you are doing the risk assessment for the for that particular client so we understand that so this client is risky client now we get the answer so if this risky if the client is risky client what we supposed to do what we supposed to do we have to extend yes we have to have further audit procedures right for you to increase the audit procedures what you supposed to do what we have to do we should we should increase the material level or reduce the material level increase or reduce if we take as not 1 percent not 1 percent
five percent. What will happen? You reduce your material level. Why? The client is risky client. Then simple answer is if the client is risky client, you want to have more additional audit procedures. For you to have more addition, or additional audit procedures, you have, to, you have to reduce your material level and increase your sample size. Increase your sample size. Very simply, if that client is risky client, you have to have more audit procedures. You have to collect more audit evidences. Right? Therefore, if the audit risk is higher, you have to extend your audit procedures. You have to increase, you have to further perform audit procedures. You have to extend your audit procedures further to compare the risk to an acceptably low level by collecting more and more audit evidences. For you to do so, you have to reduce your materiality level. You have to reduce your material level from the original stage to the next stage. Right? In the planning stage, you estimate this should be 100,000, 1% 1 from the total revenue. But while you are performing the audit, you understand that they don't have such controls and you know lot of problems are there. Therefore, this audit, this client is risky client. So, in that case, you have to reduce your material level, right? What I want to tell you then, our conclusion is, if the audit risk is higher, our materiality level should be, should be higher or lower. Lower, there is an inverse relationship with the audit risk and the material level, right? If the client is not risk a client, then we can increase our material level and reduce your sample size other way around right if the client is not that much of risky we can increase our sample uh, material level and reduce our sample size so therefore inverse relationship is there with the audit risk and the material level right that's the next important point Okay. That is the application of material level for the audit work, for the auditor. That is one aspect. The other important aspect is this. Right? Now, assume that now we already calculate the material level 100,000. Right? Now, I will come back to the original situation. Right? 100,000. Now, material level is 100,000. So at the end of the audit, we found five errors. Error one, errors and frauds. So errors and frauds, let's say misstatement. 
with statement 1, with statement 2, likewise you find 5. The implication is like this, 10,000, 12,000, 9,000, 8,000, 7,000, errors and frauds. The statements comes from errors and or frauds. 10,000, 12,000, 9,000, 8,000 and 13,000. These are the issues. So these issues management, so to you have informed the management, you have to have these problems. So now what can you do? We can inform to the management to pass the general entries to rectify those errors. You can't do that as the auditors, we can't do that. So you inform to the management to rectify those errors in their financial statements before getting the audited financial statements. So the first scenario is yes, they accept and they correct it. Right. The second scenario is they accept this and they don't correct it. Because if you do so, our profit will increase this much and you know if it is the case we have to pay more taxes and all that. So I mean these are small figures but just to get the example I am doing so. So the figures are maybe different. Right. So they keep I mean that they make the argument that yes. We have to pay taxes and a lot of things, right? It, it can be the other way around as well. So if we do the, this adjustment, our profit will go down. So then it means our, you know, the performance will be going down. So we don't get the bonuses and everything. So then, uh, so this will be, you know, the issue for us. So therefore, we are not going to make the adjustment, which is required, right? To make the fair presentation of financial statement, that is required, but by keeping different objectives by themselves as the management, they don't adjust for this. This is the scenario. Then what can you do as the auditors? Right? Again, that material is come into play. How? If those, these termed it as uncorrected misstatements. The management is not willing to adjust. Therefore, these termed it as what? Uncorrected misstatements. Uncorrected misstatements. These termed it as uncorrected misstatements. Right? These are uncorrected misstatements. These uncorrected misstatements, you have to check whether these uncorrected misstatements are material or not. Is it material? And keep in mind, not individually, you have to check whether these uncorrected misstatements are material as a whole. You have to check the aggregate impact of material misstatements. Altogether, impact is how much? Fifty. 
to 2000. You have to compare this with this. Material level is 100,000. Total uncorrected misstatement is 52,000. Total uncorrected misstatements are 52,000. Still, these misstatements are not material. Therefore, you do not want to modify your opinion. Right? You do not want to modify your opinion because these uncorrected misstatements are not yet material. Right? So, therefore, these are not significant for the users. So, therefore, even the management is not willing to correct these things, still you don't want to modify your audit opinion. You don't, you don't want to change your audit opinion. So, how do we change and, you know, how do we make the modifications to the audit opinion? We'll discuss later. It is with the audit report discussion. At this moment, you, whether you understand whether you want to make a modification or not, right? So, in this case, no. Let us say this scenario. This is 75,000. Now, right? Now, this situation is material or not? Material. Therefore, they are not changing the or oh, they are not, you know, making the revision for their misstatements, you have to definitely modify your opinion because misstatements are higher than the material level, right? Therefore, you have to modify your opinion. At least, management should make the changes or make the revision, make the correction to this misstatement, right? At least not for these things, at least they want, they want to do the correction or the rectification for the misstatement 2, misstatement 2, right? At least they want to do the correction or the rectification for this misstatement. If you do the misstatement, correction for this misstatement, the management do, the, do so, then your misstatements again get in below 40, uh, 100,000. It's about 40,000. Right? So, these are the two basic requirements or basic application of materiality in, in your audit. So, therefore, you know the key information to the auditor also the what? Materiality, right? So, based on the material, you select your sample size, you determine your sample size and again, based on the material level, you design, you, you determine whether you want to make a modification to your audit report or not, right? So, there, you know, the whole strategy is depending on what? The material level, depending on the material level. And we discuss, so originally you calculate the material in the planning stage, what, and that, you know, what you have calculated as the material level is not that much of approach for the whole audit. So, there you have to revise as and when it is required to changes to the material level based on your risk assessment, right? So, then 
you have to revisit your material level and recalculate the material level and based on that you have to I mean that uh, change your audit procedures the way that you want to reduce your risk to an acceptably low level. That is the application of materiality for your audit work, very important. Right? I think I discussed you know how practically how do you perform the materiality calculation and uh, application of the materiality for your audit work. So with that uh, we can move on to the materiality you know the PowerPoint presentation and uh, we will be able to complete the session quickly. So the, I mean most important things everything I have covered in case of materiality. Right, audit materiality. Information is material. If it's omission or misstatement could influence the economic decisions of users taken on the basis of the financial statements. Materiality depends on the size of the item of error judged in the particular circumstance of, of its omission or misstatement. It is again judgmental. Right? So, this design in the audit plan, the auditor established an acceptable material level as so as to detect quantitatively material misstatements. And again important point, so materiality means not only the amounts but also with the figure, uh, I mean the nature or quality of the you know whatever the disclosures it means qualitative I mean that uh, materiality comes from qualitative and quantitative from both aspects right if you have not disclosed some you know that disclosures let's say companies having a going concern issue the companies not continuing for the foreseeable future there is a you know doubt on that then it should be disclosed or not should be it's not quantitative figure it's a qualitative information right so both aspects should be considered manage should be considered by the auditor when determine the nature time and extent of audit procedures that's what we calculate the sample size evaluate in the effect of the statements that's why I get the say I mean the second scenario five misstatements whether it's mistake material or not. The relationship between material and audit risk there is an inverse relationship between material and the level of audit risk that is the higher the material level the lower the audit risk. You get the higher material level when the audit risk is getting low much of risky. If the, the client is risky client, your material level is getting lower and increase the sample size, increase your audit procedures. Everything what we have discussed. If after plan for specific audit procedures, the audit determines the, the auditor determines that the acceptable material level is lower, audit risk is increased. Uh, but that is the scenario I told you the client is risky client then you are reduced in the assessment assess risk of material misstatement reduce detection by modifying the nature time and extent of plan audit procedures right so that's what we discuss in evaluating the financial statements are prepared in all material respects in accordance with an applicable financial reporting framework the auditor should assess whether the aggregate of uncorrected misstatements that's what we got statements, uncorrected misstatements together that have been identified during the audit is material or not. This is what we did, right? So these are the things what we have discussed. Right? 
if the uncorrected misstatements are material then what you supposed to do you have to modify your audit opinion yeah if management refuse to adjust those material misstatements then you have to modify your audit opinion right calculation of materiality already we did as we discussed you know the materiality is depending on the education level i mean from the users point of view from the auditors point of view again it's a part of professional judgment right right this is all about materiality all that important aspects i discussed with you and that is the importance of materiality i mean not for a discussion also very important but for the whole audit everything depends on what materiality for the all i mean all all uh, audit perspective so all audit determinants are hanging on materiality right so final you know simple question is there which of the following if following if material would be a fraud simple answer is what misappropriation of asset of groups of assets so that is the only fraud where you can find all three others are what errors all three others are errors right so this is very important area right and again this is how practically that material will be i mean calculated and apply and again for the planning so these are the you know the practical implications of the planning and very important so this is the basic and you know the discussion on planning and materiality so with that next week i will be discussing financial statement analysis so it's most probably i'm not going to discuss the financial statement analysis from the auditor's point of view we will perform the analytical procedures right and identify more risk areas for the company right to make your direction for that particular client's business and finally collecting more evidences on more risk areas and to compensate or to reduce your risk to an acceptably low level for that how do we make analytical procedures for a audit that will be discussed in next week with that module with that uh, discussion right all the materials have been uploaded to the lms you can go through with that and come back with that so then we can discuss so and make sure that you have the you know the ratio analysis and, and the financial statement analysis knowledge when you are now you are studying very much important ratio analysis and financial statement analysis that knowledge is very important from the auditor's point of view right as we discussed to understand the risk areas right so that's all for the today's discussion any clarifications any comments yes do you have any comments those who are in online right so with that uh, then if you don't have any comments you can uh, wind up the session thank you very much and uh, hopefully you know that we should have more response more you know reactions from you know online uh, students so to have more you know that uh, interactive sessions right so hope that uh, you will have more interactions with the session so by next week onwards right anyway thank you very much we'll see you on next week okay